so I got the chance to visit my old high school buddy, Danny, shortly after I graduated college. I was going to stay a few days with him and his new wife, Carolyn. So I packed a few days worth of clothes and drive to Shenandoah Valley in Virginia I get there and it's hot as a mother and just as humid. We say our hellos, introduces me to Carolyn, and we head inside to eat dinner. Carolyn seems nice. Somewhat reserved but curious about me and my friendship with Danny as kids. She lets me and Danny do most of the talking, but asks some good questions to steer along the conversation. Lots of smiles, she was. After dinner, she and Danny cleaned up and I got to spend some time getting acquainted with their dog, Truman. He's small, shook all the time, and never shut the hell up. One of those yippy dogs that thinks it's bigger than everything else around it. He didn't bite though, so I didn't really mind. Once the table was clear, Carolyn leashed up Truman and took him out for a walk. Danny and I moved to the living room and caught up over the last few years. He had popped open a beer and was really enjoying the AC, as was I. We somewhat lost track of time and Danny had noticed that it had grown dark out and that Carolyn was usually back by now. He didn't seem too concerned, as sometimes she took Truman out the long way around the neighborhood. It's a small one and closed the edge of the state park where there are a lot of hiking paths that lead off. Some circle around and back to the street, so it's a good way to get a nice walk in. We keep talking and I realize that nearly an hour has passed since she left. Danny has kept looking eyeing the time on his phone and he finally picks it up to text her. Even on the long walks, she's not usually out this long. Just as he hits send, the front door opens. Truman shoots through the door. He didn't make a damn sound as he sulked straight under the couch and didn't come out. I can't see out the door from where I'm sitting, but I caught a slight whiff of something foul. I can't really describe it, but it was strong enough to leave the taste of copper in my mouth. The smell went away just as quick as it had come and slowly Carolyn steps into the house. She was slow and shuffling. There was a slight hunch to her, like she was worn out, and damn did she look it. Her knees had a slight gait to them as she walked in, leaving the door open behind her. After a few paces, she stopped, still holding the leash and not turning to face either of us. Danny shot up and, after closing the door, went up to Carolyn, asking if everything was fine. He slowly turned her to face him, as she looked real woozy, like she was about to fall over. Her mouth worked open and shut a few times, like she was trying to find the right thing to say, but nothing was coming out. Finally, she was able to wheeze out fine, though it sounded anything but. Danny felt her forehead, then mumbled something about getting her some water and aspirin and left for the kitchen. It took me a moment for the creeping feelings to settle on me. It wasn't the smell or the awkward shuffling that did it. When I think back on it, I believe it was when I finally noticed that ever since she stepped through that damn door, she didn't once blink. Being all gentlemanly, I asked Carolyn if she wanted to sit down and offered to take the leash. I was a bit nervous, but not enough to still feel helpful. As I reached down to, gently, take the leash from her, I realized something else, it could have been the half a beer I had, or the fact that I had just finished driving 8 hours to get here that day, but I could swear that her right arm was slightly longer than her left. By slightly, I mean by at least a few inches. It could have been the way she was slightly hunched over, or maybe her left arm was bent in such a way that I didn't notice, but the entire proportion just seemed off. Still not taking the tingling hint to get the fuck out of there, I asked her if she did anything to hurt her arm. She slowly turned her head to regard me. Arm, she repeated, then twisted her head down to regard it, like just now noticing it was there. I shit you not when I say that her arm spasmed as she eyed it. Then, after a few cracks and pops, it seemed to shrink down to the right size. She then turned back to me for a moment then shuffled past me into the hallway bathroom, the door closing behind her. It was at this point that I noped right the f into the kitchen, where Danny was just coming out. I grabbed him by the arm and pulled him back into the kitchen. I told him that I think something was very wrong with Carolyn, and explained what I just saw. He stood quiet for a few moments listening to me, his eyes looking behind me into the living room. He finally said, I'll go check on her. She should be fine though. He looked like he was trying to convince himself more than me. He went and knocked on the bathroom door before entering. The door was closed behind him and, for a few minutes, I could only hear his muffled voice. I was still creeped the fuck out, but stood my ground, waiting to see if I needed to shift into full fight or flight mode. Not long after, the door opened and Danny stepped out with Carolyn not far behind him. He smiled at me and said, it looks like she just got overwhelmed by the heat. 
I'm going to go ahead and take her up to bed. I'll be back down in a minute. I then looked to Carolyn, who was holding the water bottle that Danny had brought her. It was half gone, so it seemed to click with me then that she could have been dehydrated. But, Jesus, that arm. I can't just unsee that shit. He helped her upstairs, and as they were climbing, I thought I could hear Carolyn rasp out, be back. I wanted to nope right back into my car and drive off, but that would instantly turn me into Mr. Shitty Friend, and social pressure finally won over instinctual fear. Frustrated, I sat down on the recliner and eyed Truman, still huddled under the couch. He hadn't made a single noise since getting home, and he looked scared shitless. I gently patted my knee to call him out, and he refused to budge. Well, f him. I tried. It was dark and quiet, and I didn't realize that I had calmed down enough to doze off. It took a really f***ing weird sound from upstairs to wake me. It was quiet and muffled, but low enough to rumble the seat slightly. It was a repeated sound, and the only thing I can compare it to was a giant cat hawking a hairball. I'm not sure why I was stupid enough to do this. Probably that sense of duty among friends, but I got my ass out of that chair and slowly made my way upstairs. The glutteral hawking noise didn't stop, and it was definitely coming from Danny and Carolyn's room. That foul stench was back, and pretty damn potent. The combo of the smell and the noise was almost enough to empty my own guts. I reached the door, which was, of course, closed, and I was getting closer and closer to flipping the fuck out as I neared it. Why am I doing this? What the hell are you doing, Anon? Get the fuck out, I thought to myself. But no, I didn't. Not for a few more minutes, anyway. I knocked on the door, hoping they were just doing some kind of kinky fucking I didn't want a picture. The retching sound continued. I stood there looking like an awkward dumbass for a minute before knocking again, this time asking, is everything alright in there? More hawking and retching. The damn noise wasn't letting up. I steeled myself, in case my friend was in some real trouble. I wanted to know what to describe to the cops when I decided to finally call them. I reached for the doorknob and twisted it open. What I saw was all in the span of a few seconds, before I registered enough to decide to nope straight the hell out of the house and dive away. It looked like Carolyn. Almost. The top half of her was really wide, and her naked, sagging breasts inflated and deflated like respiratory masks. Not sure why my eyes caught sight of her breasts first, probably because I'm a guy? F*** if I know, what should have caught my attention first were the two monstrosities poking out of her shoulder blades. Like an extra set of arms or some shit, only somewhat bony and jointed, like the limbs of a flesh-colored insect. They arched over her and back down onto the bed in front of her. I then noticed her mouth. It was open wide, far wider than what it should have been. Something was emerging from it, like a dark and wet sack of something, and her entire body was convulsing as the thing slid further out of her mouth. It was hanging over what I finally noticed was Danny. Her body was so wide that I at first didn't see him underneath her. Danny was quite dead. Or unconscious with a shitton of blood loss. Red was everywhere. The bed, the walls, the floor. It was especially all over Carolyn, though I doubt much, if any, was hers. Without stopping whatever the f ritual she was doing over her husband, she looked up. This was when I noped down the stairs, grabbed the keys off the counter, said f*** it to the bag of clothes I left upstairs, and drove the hell away. I'd like to say that I called the police right then. I didn't. My god, I didn't. I drove for four hours, constantly checking my rear view until I couldn't see straight and then stopped at the next motel. Bolted the doors and slept with all the lights on. In the morning, I called the authorities and placed an anonymous tip to have them check Danny's address. It was after a week since returning home that I had googled their names. A small article appeared on the local news site that stated that he and Carolyn were missing from their residence. No sign of forced entry or any blood or struggle. The only puzzle was that their cars were both left parked in the garage. I can still hear that retching. Feel the vibration of it in my chest. It makes me glad that I never gave Danny my new address.